need you, I want them. How about that? So maybe we're not just a house of prayer for all people, but for all creatures. What a great vision that is. And if you're in exile, to know there is a place out there that says, yeah, you belong here. They won't take you, but I will. You know, in that same psalm that Duncan refers to every, referred to every week, you know, the one that starts, this is, and that doesn't start, but in the middle of Psalm 118, it says, this is a day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Well, further down, inside that psalm, there's a great verse. The stone that was rejected by the head builder will become the corner stone of the next building, to paraphrase. In other words, you may have been thrown out because you didn't fit in. But you're the cornerstone of the next temple. That's the message of a liberal church. You are the cornerstone of a great temple, each and every one of you. You may have been rejected by those, but you will be the foundation of something else. That's the message the exile needs to hear, that the exile will become not the one on the outside, but the one on the inside, in fact, the very center. We could say that a liberal church is here to say that every one of us is a cornerstone of faith for a community, for a church, for a movement, for a hope. But the one I like best are pilgrims. Those are the people who leave home because they know there's a better home someplace else. This is not the same as going on a pilgrimage when you go and collect things. I know I have a wonderful couple here, Paula and David. You've, you've been on the whole pilgrimage of Santiago de Compostela. I so envy that. And there are other pilgrimages one can make, but I'm talking about another pilgrimage, a spiritual pilgrimage in the heart, not in the body, one in which you say, I am not yet complete. I need to find what's missing. I need to go away from where I know to find the thing I need to know to be in order to be complete. You know, America has this myth too. It's the myth of starting over, of the land of opportunity, of being liberated to become the person you want to be. But it's as ancient as Abraham, who there in the city of Ur, heard a little voice saying, get up, move, go across the land, found a new nation. That sense that you have a place you need to go, a person you need to become, a mission, a vocation. No matter the reason, of course, the spiritually homeless are looking for something. The lost and the exiled pine for welcome and acceptance. But the pilgrim, I think, is something we should try to be more like. Because the pilgrim seeks to find something they don't know yet, something they want to be complete. Call it wholeness. This is, I believe, the true genius of the liberal faith, that we promote the idea that somehow we are all incomplete creatures all the way through our lives, looking to find wholeness, completeness, integrity of mind and heart and body. Back when I was in seminary, I had to read a book that no one likes to read, but I've read it twice, once then and once recently, and I've seen through it the second time to a new level, if you want to call it that. That's the Confessions of St. Augustine. Now, this is a guy who gave us lots of bad juju. There's no question. He had a really serious number of problems, but the reality is he's also a human being, and if you can get past his authoritative status to hear the human being, it's really quite a touching story he has, a man looking to find his way into the place he needed to be. And at the beginning of his book, his book, The Confessions, and he wrote way more books than that long after he wrote that. This, by the way, is the first, quote, personal confession or spiritual autobiography ever written. At the very beginning of that book, he uses the phrase, for thou hast formed us for thyself, and our hearts are restless till they find rest in thee. I'm sorry. I think this is the liberal state of the soul. We have restless hearts. Not for that God, not for that salvation, but for a union, a communion, a, a wholeness that we want to exist in our lives, to exist in our hearts, exist in our minds, a sense of completion. We taste it from time to time, perhaps in a sermon, in a piece of music, in a friend, in a place, but it's a taste, not the whole thing. We want a destination, 
And that's what a pilgrim is seeking, a destination, a place that is the end of the line, and that is the wholeness of the heart, the wholeness of the soul. And that's what you're here to find, the wholeness. It could be here, it could be back in your original faith community. It could be on the golf course. I know many people are trying that right now. But the point is we're looking for wholeness, to have all of ourselves in one place. And I think the real message of liberal religion, if we can preach it, is to proclaim this dream of wholeness of individuals and wholeness of communities and the wholeness of the world. I want you to think about that because people want to say, what do they believe at Fountain Street Church? You're not really a church or you worship Satan there. I'm not sure that Satan shows up. Maybe he's in the balcony where I can't reach. I want you to say, Fountain Street Church wants us all to be whole, to be complete, to have hearts and minds and souls so knit together that we feel more alive than we do right now. I want you to hope for that. I want us to preach that. I want us to be that way. I wish I had better words for it. But I know sitting here, as you listen to me, you want a piece of that. I know as I speak it, I want it too. And so I want to offer you, even though we're a few minutes late, my gratitude for you going on the pilgrim path with me. That we are here to take another step, if we can, toward that wholeness of heart and mind, that completeness of being, that hopefulness of the world. And Lord knows, the world needs a better hope than the ones we've been offered. Let's go another step, shall we? Let's go another step along the pilgrim path. Because yes, whatever you are out there, you have made us for thyself. And let our hearts always be restless until they rest in thee. May it be. I've asked for you to sing this great hymn from the story of Egypt, when Israel was in Egypt's land. And you don't even have to open the book because I've asked that the choir sing the verses, maybe a solo voice or two, and all you have to rem remind, remind you, remember is, let my people go, and then go down Moses, way down in Egypt land, let my, it's really easy. Remember, this was written before hymn books were published. So they made it just for you guys to do this. And remember, it's a story of people wanting to go home. Shall we sing? Oh, 